good. Should be recording now. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so first call to order, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing, uh, I'm sorry, public meeting on uh, Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. My name is Jane Wald and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, um, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Open the town's homepage on an internet browser, navigate to the town calendar at the bottom of that page, click on the historical commission meeting link, uh, zoom and telephone connections and the meeting agenda can be found there. No in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means just described. In addition, this meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual uh, by someone who will volunteer to take some notes. Look at me. Thank you. We can get to that in a minute. Thank you. Um, Wait, I didn't say me. I said, don't look at me. Oh, I said <laughs> it can be me. <laughs> no, I, I have so much trouble writing right now. Oh, okay. I put the paper down. Well, right. Robin's in her car, so she can't do it this okay. time. Okay. Well, we'll. Does we'll, anybody, we'll, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was here before. I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna turn my video off until I can figure out where to put this stupid. <laughs> so um, I, I, I'll try to take notes, rough notes as we go along and I know Ben, you do that too. Um, okay, so now let's uh, take attendance by roll call. Uh, board members, as you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, uh, and then please place yourselves back on mute when done. Uh, Patricia Off. Present. Catherine Davis is not present. Robin Fordham. Present. Becky Lockwood. Present. Janet Marquardt. Here. Teddy Startup. Here. And uh, I'm here too, Jane Wald. I'm here. Um, so just a, a few housekeeping comments. Um, you know, if there are technical difficulties, we might need to pause temporarily. I don't think that's ever happened, but just in case, um, uh, we might need to pause and then continue the meeting when uh, things return to the normal. And if you have any technical issues uh, during the meeting, please let Ben know if through the chat, uh, certainly if you have access to that. Um, uh, for orderly discussion, please use the raise hand function to uh, ask a question or make a comment. Um, I'll do my best to see your raised hand and call upon you to speak. Sometimes if um, screen share is on, it's a little harder to, to figure out, but I'll keep my participant list open so I can see it that way. Um, uh, ben, of course, will uh, help me in keeping track of commission members who wish to be recognized uh, and if neither of those things works, then just, just talk. <laughs> um, uh, and then after speaking, please remember to, to, to remute yourself. Um, for members of the public who are, might be in attendance, there is an opportunity for public comment on the agenda toward the end of the meeting. Um, and uh, especially when there are, um, demolition requests, there's usually a public comment period during those times as well. Um, if members of the public wish to make a comment during a public comment period, uh, you must join the meeting via the Zoom teleconferencing link or video uh, or teleconferencing. So that's the dial in or video conferencing. Um, and as explained earlier, these links can be found on the town homepage calendar listing. Uh, um, so for members of the public, please indicate you wish to make a comment using the raise hand function, uh, raise hand button. 
uh, when that is solicited. And when called on, please identify yourself with your name and address. And, um, and then you're welcome to, to speak for uh, up to three minutes at the discretion of the commission chair. Um, so those are the, that, that's the, the general housekeeping. Um, so moving on to the agenda, um, announcements is number one. And um, Ben, do you have announcements and, or do other members of the commission have announcements they would like to make? Not at the moment, no. Okay. Then our first uh, order of business is to nominate and vote on a representative to the design review board. So this was discussed. Need to wait on that. I'm sorry? We might need to wait because I think Catherine was our nominee. Oh. Yeah, that's right. We said we would. That's, that. why yeah, that's why she's not here. That's why she's not Okay, we'll, we'll wait on that. Um, all right, so then we get right into um, Community Preservation Act project presentations. And I know there are, um, uh, there are um, attendees who um, are representing different projects and, um, yeah, so I think uh, Jean is here to discuss the okay. Con Conkey House. Is, yeah. Are we? Do we want to stick to the order that I wrote here? Does that make yes. Sense? Yeah. Let's let's try to do that. Yeah. So, so the Bismarck Conkey House and Jean Lukens. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um. Please, Jane. Were you going to say something? Oh, I was just saying hello and welcome, and um, just going to invite you to um, describe your project. Um, let us know if you have any questions, and we'll uh, do our best to, to, to give you our best advice. Okay, well, I'm here to talk about what we call the Conkey Stevens House, which is at 664 Main Street in part of the East Amherst Historic District. Um, the house has become very rundown um, and needs major repairs. It is part of a mixed use condominium complex. Um, most of the 62 units in the complex are residential units that are behind the historic site. Um, and so far we have been trying to support the building using their um, monthly Con condominium HOA fees. Uh, and uh, also I'd like the commission to know that there was a period of time that this particular HOA was under really bad management. And so we have been climbing up out of a hole and essentially been uh, dealing with sa uh, safety concerns um, and taking care of emergencies, uh, but we do have a positive cash flow and we have managed to rebuild our capital reserve and are uh, wanting to do take good care of the building, but it, there are so many major projects with it that it is really beyond the scope of the HOA to handle it. So um, can you give me guidance? Would you like me to be talking hard numbers or do you want me to give you an overview of what repairs are needed? I think um, begin with perhaps um, give us the overview. And I think some of our advice will probably be to suggest that you focus on um, elements of the project that are, are preservation, uh, historic preservation. Um, that, yeah. All right, well, we, we uh we are proposing to preserve the original mansard slate roof. Uh, there are five chimneys on top, which need to be completed uh, at the time of the roof repair. And there is also, um, there are some small projects down around the foundation. Uh, the main house needs to be repointed. Uh, the most obvious, uh, 
uh, issue with the house is the beautiful, once beautiful, original wraparound porch and with its ornate balusters and uh, railings and the original ornate dormers. There are 13 of them which need to be uh, repaired. The original granite steps, uh, which have been setting there for 180 years have become um, tilted and need to be uh, reset. And there is a, the original iron fence, which we had to take down because of damage from uh, tree limbs falling, uh, tree limb falling on it. And we have that uh, down in the basement ready to go when, when um, that time comes. Okay, um, let's see, then um, can you tell us, uh, maybe this is a good point to, at which to let us know some of the estimates and what, um, you know, the process you've gone through to, to acquire estimates for these di different um, pieces of the project and what kind of uh, numbers have, have come back. Okay, well, KPM um, has been wonderful. They have uh, managed properties in the area and are uh, pointed us towards La Liber, I don't know how to say their names because I've only read it, but Liber Liberties um, builders who are specialized in rehas uh, rehabbing historic buildings. Um, and I can, um, let's see. I, I mean, I can, I, I don't know how specific to get. I don't want to take up all your time with specific numbers, but um, I have provided you guys with a several page written um, draft in which I enumerated all the specifics. Um, but um, we've also gone to um, a, the only person in the area who specializes in slate roofs to get our, our roof evaluated. Um, that's Mahan Slate Roofing Company, and they're out of Springfield. And we have gone to Paul Lenz Masonry for our uh, masonry work. Um, Four Seasons has offered a good estimate for resetting the granite steps in front. Uh, we've gone to, um, well, there's some things we're not asking for your help with, but we've also gone to Atanda Painting and have uh, several breakdown estimates from them. Okay. Um, I should have asked, uh, Ben, did you, did you send that? draft to all commission members? I did not, no. Okay, okay. Um, so I think, Jean, that um, um, I, I'd be glad to give you some feedback on the, the draft and I'm sure other commission members would also. Um, so then maybe we can circulate that afterwards. Um, I think, so I, I, I'd love for other commission members to, to speak, especially our current and upcoming uh, Community Preservation Act com uh, Committee representatives. Uh, I think it's terrific that you've got hard numbers, hard estimates. I think that makes a big difference to the CPA committee. Um, uh, and all of the items that you just described as you gave us the overview, those are, I mean, to me, they all sound like um, obvious historic preservation measures. Um, but um, Robin or Hetty, do you have some suggestions or, um, Hetty, your hand is up. Yeah, I, it's just a question about the structural integrity of the building as per a slate roof. Um, have you got any information about how much the new slate roof would weigh and whether the current framing would support that? Well, the current 
structure of the building is supporting the slate roof now. Um, it's not like we didn't, it's never not had its slate roof on. Um, what, but the, um, with the crumbling chimneys and the old flashing, the water is, for example, curling around the edges of it and um, infecting the wood with water uh, at the site of the dormers. So that needs to be repaired. And there are crumbling, you know, slate that is typical of a slate roof that the HOA has been repairing all along. But at, at no point has the entire roof been gone over by a roofer. And um, if you like, I can read to you what they are suggesting needs to be done. It's quite a long list. It's about, it's got about 20 well, you items. Share, you could share it in a document afterwards. Okay. So that, you know, sure. I, I have sent a copy of it. In the evening, I'm not going to be able to remember everything. Right. Um, and I'd rather be able to kind of weigh, you know, what you're going to be, you know, thinking about doing. Um, um, at a board meeting, um, probably a year or two ago, I remember asking uh, Kendrick Property Management to go up in with the, with the roofers who were evaluating the roof at that time to make sure there was nothing underneath, no mold, no rot. And that report came back uh, that there was, there was no problem. So um, if you like, I can ask them to reevaluate that a second time. What do other people think? <laughs> um, Robin, has, Robin has her hand up. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm the former CPA rep. Hetty is the new CPA rep. I think Hetty and Jane have a lot more experience with actual um, architectural projects than I do. So that's great. We have like a very rounded um, crew of people who can weigh in. I would say from the CPA perspective, what a great project um, to be bringing forward. Mm -hmm. um, huge public visibility. Um, the things that first can, do you have a bottom line dollar figure that you're looking to submit with your proposal? Just so I can get a sense of things. A bottom line for or from you for how, or for how much you'd be re requesting in CPA funds, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I do. Um, we added up all the proposals. Um, we also reviewed what we could contribute. And um, so the total amount that we are applying for is 200,078, I mean, I'm sorry, 278,410 dollars. Okay. And that uh, that is the amount that you're applying for, and there's an additional amount that your um, homeowners association is going to supply for the repairs. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, we will be pulling uh, twenty thousand dollars out of our capital reserve, and we will levy fifty-one thousand dollars on as a special assessment on all of the unit owners. So okay. we hope to contribute seventy-one thousand dollars. Okay, and so given the um, that that's a pretty large figure. Um, is this project capable of being phased in terms, that's one, these are the things that the CPA will be looking for or that I would encourage them to be looking for if I was still on the committee that, um, you know, if you could break your ask out into a two or three year phased project, that would be maybe more, maybe more palatable, but obviously they also look for anything that has um, an aspect of urgency to it. So that's, you know, I, I don't know if favorability is the right word, but that's that's weighed in consideration of, of, the, um, of, of the proposals. Okay. I have broken it down into two, uh, two parts. Um, there is some considerable urgency for both parts, but um, in terms of phasing it, it phases very, uh, readily into two pieces. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that, of course, the first thing we need to do is secure the building and make it waterproof. Sure. So we need to go for the roof first. And the estimate on the uh, roof, and in order to do the roof, we have to repair the chimneys so they can flash to the newly repaired chimneys. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the, um, as to the quote that came in from the mason is dependent upon being able to use the staging 
of the roofers. So we're cutting costs there. Okay. Um, so, so we would wrap together for the first phase of the request would be for a hundred, um, the, the um, total amount would be $119,760. Okay. And, and then would, would the second phase need to happen within the next 12 months or could it conceivably be a second year uh, proposal for CPA? It could conceivably be a second year proposal, but there is, I would like to present to you very quickly what the urgencies are. Yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. go ahead. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that, um, I mean, you could, concert, you could certainly okay. apply for the entire amount and then um, and then if it was, if it faced hesitation in committee, it could be suggested that it be, is, but definitely having a sense of which things are time sensitive is, um, is extremely helpful. Okay, so um, the second part, the second phase would be the wraparound porch and dormers, by the way, because that is all one of, that's one contractor doing both and mm -hmm. neither can be done until the roof is secure. So that was mm -hmm. the second phase. The urgency, um, uh, of the second part is that the, um, the, the worst of it we took care of, the wraparound porch was in danger of rotting off the building uh, and the HOA rescued it by rebuilding the understructure, the deck and some of the balusters. However, the ornate railing and balusters are now rotting and falling off the building. And while the posts are still holding up the roof, the soffit and fascia boards are rotten and therefore the rot could be uh, penetrating the underlying roof structure. And once that's affected, then the, the um, rescue of the porch will be many, many thousands of dollars more. Um, well, that, uh, that is extremely thorough. And I have to congratulate you on uh, the thoroughness of that presentation because that really makes it very clear why it's all very urgent. So that I, I think is really helpful. Um, I was just going to ask Ben and Jane, is this house on the National Register at this point? It is, it's individually okay. listed. Okay. And I was gonna actually mention that, that um, um, there, there are the National Register submissions and a listing on the state uh, database of historic assets that would make terrific attachments to your proposal. Um, and I see Ben's hand. Yeah, I was just going to say two things. One is um, just being mindful of time. We have a few CPA applications um, and, and an agenda later. So just wanted to be mindful of that. And then secondly, um, just, just for everyone's knowledge and for uh, the applicant especially i think the um the wraparound porch i don't think the railings meet building code at the moment um because they're too low so uh just that's probably something you'll encounter is uh needing to raise the the height of the uh of the railing and i think it's a discussion to be had about um you know you might lose some of the historic integrity and that's something that happens when it, with building code by issues. Um, so maybe we can figure out the exact uh, treatment uh, at, at a later date for how, how the railing is treated. Okay, thanks, Jen. Um, I see Jan's hand up and then, um, and then I see Jean, and then I think we probably ought to um, kind of summarize and uh, move to the next application. So Jan, would you like to comment? You're uh, muted. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask Jean, um, I don't know how much experience you have with site roofs and Mahan is very well considered in the area, but there is a monopoly. So, um, you know, there are different kinds of slate, different thicknesses that last different lengths of time. And they also do have used slate that they've taken from other buildings that can be um, worked into a job. So you might just find out, you know, exactly what they're planning on using, um, how heavy they are, and whether they can replace some of the ones that are bad on your roof with some 
um, good used ones from elsewhere to save money. Thank you. I will take that into consideration. Um, and then I wanted to add one quick point, mm -hmm. which um, I have seen uh, as I was looking at re restored buildings with this kind of beautiful low rail, I've seen them put pipe, drill a pipe through at a higher point on the posts so that you can maintain the same ornate, um, historically accurate railing uh, but you can also address safety issues without detracting from the appearance. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I sounds to me like um, this group, uh, members of the commission um, are excited by your proposal and um, wanna wanna help you develop the the proposal further um, in whatever way is useful and timely for you. Um, so, and uh, so I did have a chance to, to look at the draft uh, just a few minutes before this meeting and, um, and I'll get back to Eugene with some, some thoughts about it. Okay, well, I thank you. We'll be able to share it. Yeah, we'll also be able to share it with other uh, commission members. Great, well, thank you so much for hearing us out. Yeah, okay, thank you, Jean. Um, so next is um, the Strong House. And is there, let's see, I believe George Naughton is here. Oh, and Catherine Davis is here. Yes, uh, we have our next member. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Well, <laughs> hi. Thank you. Sorry for being late. No worries. We'll. we'll We'll come back to an item of business that we <laughs> temporarily skipped over. Um, so let's see, uh, good evening, George. Um, you wanna tell us a bit about um, what's up at the Strong House? Uh, funny you should ask, yes. Um, so since last time, when I talked to you about a uh, plaster fall that we had on the second floor, we got an estimate for repairing that particular piece. Um, Mr. Scott Howell um, thought that he could do the job for under $800. Um, just repair that plaster and there's some other that has come loose. It's not attached to the ceiling anymore, but that's okay. He has ways to reattach it. So he felt that that would solve the problem. Um, so for that piece, um, we're withdrawing our application. We hadn't actually made an application, but um, the idea that we had to apply for CPA funds, we don't think you know $800 is enough to warrant applying for CPA. But the plaster situation did alert us that first off, we have other, um, other ceilings with plaster on them. And we are looking at getting a comprehensive evaluation of the strong house. You know, what is the situation with the plaster on the ceilings? Um, are they going to need some work? And also we would like to get a structural analysis evaluation of the strong house in light of the proposed Jones Library demolition and construction. Um, Neither of those is going to go through this year. Yes, there it is. There's the Strong House and Jones Library. <clears throat> um, we're not applying for funds for either of those this year. We'll need to find people who can do this kind of analyses and then get um, estimates from them. Um, but suggestions that you folks had about who we might work with or any special way we might go about doing this would be very much appreciated. Um, let's see. I think it makes a lot of sense to do a structural analysis of the building with everything that's going to be happening nearby. Um, in in so uh, <laughs> I have a very odd um, experience of, 
of going through a plaster ceiling failure. Um, uh, and it, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think having a structural analysis is, is a really good idea for a building that could, um, does have some fragility to it. Um, We've had problems in the past. Um, it was before my time, but the last phase of the Jones construction, I understand, um, uh, damaged the drywall foundations of our house. So they've been reinforced. Mm -hmm. um, there's some modern concrete work down there. But now the Jones is talking about um, doing more work. Mm. So we'd like to be proactive on that. Mm. Um, I'm wondering if our CPA representatives can advise on whether that kind of consultation is um, is eligible for CPA funding? I'm gonna hand that over to Ben, maybe. <laughs> yeah, still, I think there's still a little bit of uncertainty about um, structural analyses and, and engineering, um, kind of like the soft costs that happened before a uh, an application to to actual actually do the repairs. We, I think, we have funded those in the past. Uh, but the, uh, the town, I guess, you know, I guess the accounting department is, you know, questioning the, the eligibility based off of an opinion provided by the CPA coalition, um, from the state. And so we're working with our town attorney to figure out what, if, if those items are eligible and, um, it, they could also these types of soft costs and engineering assessments and studies could also be eligible under CPA um, administration funds, which uh, yeah. uh, uh, up to 5% per year. So it's a decent amount of money. Yeah, and that was what I was thinking that um, the there's, there's language that suggests that this kind of work could be done if it helps the town, I think it's like if it helps the town manage its historic resources. That's a gross oversimplification of the language, but um, there's that possibility. I don't know, Ben, if you think the suggestion is wise to just, um, what I would suggest, but you can comment on this, is just um, to submit an application. And then um, as we figure out how things can be funded, there's something to consider as opposed to not having something on the table at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Hetty, is your hand new, newly up? Oh, okay. Um, George, there, I have another um, thought for you that is further, would be further down the road. Um, if, if, um, if the structural analysis results in a uh, recommendations for repairs, um, then one so another source of funds in addition to CPA, I mean, I think probably whatever work needs to be done would be probably eligible for CPA funding. But another source of funds is the Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund. And they, um, they explicitly uh, exclude the kinds of soft costs Ben was just talking about, they, they explicitly exclude architects and engineering fees. They wanna pay for actual, you know, the actual bricks and mortar work. Um, but that's a, that's a state, again, that's a state uh, grant that is run through the Massachusetts Historical Commission. So that would be, um, that's either an alternate source of funding uh, to CPA or an additional source of funding in addition to CPA. Hmm. But you're thinking possibly we should go ahead and um, fill out an application for CPA consideration um, just so there will be something on the table to discuss. 
Yeah, that, 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 that's right. Is, that's your suggestion, Robin, right? Your recommendation? That is my recommendation, if uh, Ben concurs with that, yep. So yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll have some clarification by the time uh, CPA doesn't need to vote until December. Um, so I, I would hope we would have clarification by then. Uh, George, you were saying, um, it, it, so were you thinking that that would be for this year or are you saying that that would be for a future year? Well, we figured that it would probably be for a future year. We had thought that we would not apply for CPA, CPA funding for this year um, because we don't have anything close to a dollar amount yeah. on anything, you know, with whether it's the uh, structural analysis evaluation mm -hmm. or whether it's uh, any work implied by that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're just at the starting point here. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense to get those, um, have, a, have a better idea of what the proposal would be for the structural analysis. And I guess there's one other thing uh, that you've probably picked up in the CPA materials, and that is um, the funding. So if the application is due in October and it is ultimately approved by town council, the funding is not available until the following, is it the following June? Hmm. Yeah. yeah, something, yeah. So there's a there's a little calendar thing just to you know be aware of as you think about the timeline. I think it's July one, right? Then that oh. was clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, other members of the commission, do you have um, thoughts you'd like to share with George about the strong house? Um, do people know of uh, firms that can do this kind of structural evaluation? I mean, you don't have to don't give it to me right now, but uh, we can trade emails if you know going forward, who can we work with on this? I, I know a couple that, yeah, that I could share with you. Okay. And, and Catherine, were you nodding your head too? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. we'll have some thoughts for you. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I'm glad the the plaster repair is gets to go ahead uh, and is so so nice on the pocketbook. He he Before, was not seeing a big problem. Um, so, you know, he's the plaster guy. Um, mm -hmm. If he says it can be, it, it's a little fix, then maybe it's just a little fix. Good. Good news then. Yes. Jane, can I just throw in one quick thing? I was multitasking on my iPad here and there is a website called historicfunding.com, which you might want to look at for additional sources of funding. Historicfunding.com, yeah, <laughs> it's new. <laughs> Uh, well, with a name like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, George, and good luck. And we'll be in touch. Um, oh, I see there's a hand up. Uh, there's not a hand up. Um, I think it looked like Ann Tweedy was here and now he's. Oh, weird. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Well, so thank you for your time. And we'll be in touch by email after the meeting's over. Um, okay, very good. Very good. Thank you, Thanks, George. Thank you. Thank you, George. All right, um, the Amherst Women's Club um, has some ideas about um, the CPA proposal and we have representatives of the Women's Club here, I believe. We do, I will bring them into the meeting here. 
uh, just to orient everyone that Amherst Women's Club is on uh, Triangle Street. Um, it's this building here across from the uh, Dickinson Museum that's over here. Mm -hmm. So Google Maps is a beautiful fall day. It's a, a glimpse of what's to come. Here we are. So welcome, Dorothy and Liliana. Yes, we're both here and I'm going to start. I'm Dorothy McCaffrey. I'm a member of the Women's Club. Um, this, our house is known, we own the Alice Maud Hills house. Uh, it is a house that is on the National Register and we're also in the Emily Dickinson Historical District. Um, the house was built by Leonard Hills in 1864. His um, architect was William Pratt, who I believe has, um, was the architect for some of the other buildings in, in um, Amherst. It's in the Italian Renaissance style. Um, we came by the house in 1922 when his daughter, Alice Maud Hills, died. She had been a member of the Women's Club and she left the house to the Women's Club. And um, so ever since then, we have maintained the house and um, paid for its repairs and so forth. Um, in the last few years, we've completely re, um, done the um, first floor, which is the public area of the house. Uh, with uh, age, appro age appropriate, that's not the correct word, but um, era appropriate uh, wallpapers and so forth. Um, the house has three small apartments upstairs that we rent. The house is used for our meetings and our fundraisers. Uh, and we, the reason we raise funds is because in our charter, um, we are committed to giving scholarships to the high school every year and also we give a certain amount of money to various community services that apply to us for mm -hmm. grants. Now last year because of COVID we couldn't have any fundraising so we did not do either of those things but normally we do each year. Um, let's see the house is commonly known as the Alice Maud Hills house after the woman who left it to us. Uh, we have had an endowment but because of the extensive repairs we've had to make on the house in the last, I'd say seven or eight years, it is dwindling and dwindling. And we are really, really nervous that we might have to sell the house in the foreseeable future, which for us would be a terrible thing. And I think for the town, it would be a terrible thing too, because who knows what somebody who buys it would do with it. Um, the main issue with the house currently is that it needs a paint job and all the attendant things that go with an outside paint job and all the attendant things that go with the paint job, you know, repairing the porches, um, uh, the, the roof on, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the roof on the cupola, cupola, I guess is the correct pronunciation. Um, let's see, porches, one corner of the house has repairs it needs. There's a, there's a wall uh, on the north corner that needs repairing. And we have gotten a detailed estimate from, um, Ron Keith Construction, who has done worked on worked on this house for the better part of 20 years, and it's either as the general contractor or actually doing the work himself. And I think this job here, he would do himself. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that the house is important to Amherst histories in, in, in ways if you think about the women's movement, because the women's club itself started in the I don't know the exact date, but it was in the 1880s or 90s. And it really was a place that women could go to to um, have social, educational, uh, and civic knowledge and input into the goings on of the town. And that was, I mean, anybody who knows anything about his, the history of that period in the United States knows that that was a big movement for women and it was important to the women of the town. Um, So as I said, we, um, we are applying this year because we feel that um, this is a big job. And if we would have to pay for this ourselves, our endowment would almost disappear. And because we, you know, we have tax bills, we have very large insurance bills for this house. So you know all that stuff. I don't have to enumerate what we have to pay for out of the income that we get from the rents, which is small. And we also uh, rent the house out 
again, this didn't happen last year, but to small weddings, um, LIR meets here sometimes. Um, sometimes it's people will have uh, collations after funerals or wedding showers, uh, anything that is like 50 <clears throat> or fewer people. And then we have our meetings here twice a month. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, um, what, what's the size of the request? Do you, are you looking at? Well, <clears throat> did you add up all the figures? Yes. All right. My Good. colleague Liliana has the, has the numbers. Okay. I mean, uh, I tell her the, what if, uh, I, I'll just okay. give a, a little specifics, not okay. many of them, but uh, according to that, what we got from our contractor. Repair and paint cupola starting from the top of the building is 5,400 roughly. Then repair of the roof. House has uh, uh, four different roofs and the second floor roof will require about 20,000, 20,200 dollars. And then the big job uh, including uh, repair of all kind of um, uh, decorative work on the house is going to cost $100,625. Uh, there are a few more items, uh, 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 something related to the north wall and repair of that wall, about $6,400. And uh, <clears throat> north end porch, that is also $2,100. All together, when we add, add up everything, um, it is about 166K for this um, for extensive um, painting of the house mm -hmm. and repairing of ne all ne necessary uh, tanks. Club already committed $30,000 to the uh, reparations that are um, necessary and the first in the line to be addressed. And we are hoping that we shall uh, be able to access to these funds of CPA and get some help in this. Okay, thank you. That's the, I know how expensive the, the repair and painting of that style and size of house with the care uh, that needs to be exercised with um, re with repairs, first of all. Um, yeah, and, yeah I, I, I can yeah. show you a picture if you uh, got a picture would up see. Up. No, uh, uh, my picture, uh, I don't know. Ben, can you put me on? I have it in my hand, uh, the most probably that is not so um, easy. If, if you can uh, it's, it's, it's too small, I think. Um, yeah. Upper, uh, Above the main entrance, we have an uh, um, area uh, that really requires repair uh, balustrades. The balustrades. Uh, yeah. Are uh, falling well, apart and they need to be uh, remade. That would be there, yes, where you're yes. pointing. Yeah. That, uh, that, that is the yeah. front, yes, yeah. exactly. The balcony above the uh, main entrance. Mm -hmm. There, there we have a, a problem that is visible <laughs> if you mm -hmm. uh, stand in front of the house. Yeah, very much so. Um, Robin, are you wanting to speak? I see your hand. Hi, uh, yeah, I would turn on my video, but I'm in the dark, so you wouldn't be able to see me anyway. Um, so I think we were talking about an ask of what, 130, 260,000, is that right? All told, yes. yes. Okay, um, so my first thought again, which is similar to the previous applicant is having a, a staged set, since it's such a big amount of money, having a staged set, set of um, repairs, what are the most urgent, what are the least urgent because CPA has funding every year. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next thing um, I would think is trying to uh, for these larger asks is trying to find, especially if, if we don't have an issue of urgency, is trying to find other matching sources or um, I wouldn't say alternative, I'd say additional sources so that mm -hmm. you can lower the amount of the ask to the CPA. And that might be something that I, or uh, well, that I would offer to try to research um, to see if there are any 
appropriate funds. Um, and that, that also helps the CPA application to, for an applicant to come either with funds in hand or to demonstrate a seeking of alternative funds or to demonstrate that there are no alternative funds that can be sought. Um, so that would be another piece of it. So I think the most important thing would be to first determine which pieces of work are critical in terms of the next year and then stage things out from there. And then also at the same time, take a, an approach of, of seeking other res resources for funding to combine with the package. Now, are you, um, I, now when we submit this, um, we've only got a couple of weeks before this has to be submitted. Um, how do you suggest that we break that down? Because as I recall on the application, I don't know if there's a place where you can say what you're asking us to say, or are you asking us to find out if there is, what's the most urgent and only apply for that this year? Is that what you're saying? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I would, but I would, I would definitely be able to outline. And so you'll have the application process and then you'll also have a presentation opportunity. So it's not necessary yeah. to have every, detail nailed down necessarily for the, um, the application, although you could even just put a line in there that you're trying to determine which repairs are most critical in terms of a timeline. And then at your presentation, which would be uh, later in the application process, you can have more of a clear sense of that and yeah. you present and the committee members will have an opportunity to ask you questions. So that would be a good thing to be prepared for. Is there any limit in the amount of money that we can uh, require in our um, proposal? Uh, I don't think there's a limit then, right? I don't think so, no. No, no but these what? are, these, but, but it's a large ask. It's a large request. It is. Um, it is. And I do know that the painting of the cupola, the repair of the cupola and the repair of that balustrade I think are probably very important, but I, because I'm not the person who talks to the contract, I'm not absolutely certain of that. Right, so yeah, if you can get, I, mean, I, have his, I have his bid, but I'm not the person. We, we shall definitely it. make the list of the most, most urgent works yeah. in this, but the most probably we shall put all uh, what we have from contractor as a specification of works required and the, uh, the quotation that he gave, so. Uh, yeah, and you might- uh, You are, you are the, also the... suggesting that we seek other funds and uh, somehow verify that we apply to them too, or what exactly you expect from us to put in the proposal regarding that? Um, I would think given the timeline that it's just a short time away that you are a simple statement that you are seeking additional sources of funding and trying to determine which repair. And you shall also critical. say that we already committed this 30K for a repair of the house as- a, Absolutely, a yes, yeah. Okay. Yep, there's, yeah, you put that into your budget. And, and again, anything that's not clear, that ends up being not clear in the proposal, you'll have the opportunity to okay. address okay. the committee, yeah. Thank you. I'd like to uh, contribute one little thing about Please. strategy. Um, and so I understand that CPA needs to know what is most urgent, but I think if it, I think it's probably better to package it as here's one component of work, here's another component of work and, uh, and not say, this uh, this is what we want to do this year, and and part two is what we want to do next year. Because that, I mean, for two reasons. One is that's an invitation to give you less money, and second, uh, the urgency of certain work. Um, if there's something that's uh, say there's some kind of carpentry thing that's very urgent, and there's some other carpentry thing that's less urgent, well, there's a cost to, to dividing them. Uh, and I think, C I think CPA needs to understand that- um, That's true. That, 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 that we need to find, um, if, 
efficient ways to maximize um, the use of these CPA funds. That's true. Well, the yeah, contractor did, the contractor gave us his bid in sections. So okay. if we just, if we just um, submit his bid the way he made it out, maybe that will fulfill that requirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that may well, that may well be. I, and I think maybe that's why he did it that way. Okay. Anything that requires staging, you know, if, if they need to put up scaffolding. Oh, um, oh yes. There, yes. There's scaffolding there's for painting of the house first uh, for uh, scraping it. Uh, uh, everything is given in this uh, uh, wash entire house, build containment areas for uh, paint, scraping, and other debris, scrape and sand, and as yeah, needed. Got all that in there. Uh, yeah, spot I, prime, etc. Calc uh, apply two coats of paint, all yeah. materials, etc. Hundred thousand. Okay, I, I my uh, I think the CPA committee especially needs to understand that that the cost of staging is very high. Um, it is um, it's a waste of money to put up staging, take it down, and then oh. bring it back at another stage to put it up again. That's a, that's a, that's a big expense. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I, it, if, you're, if you're piecing things together, I would suggest avoiding breaking up the staging yeah. at all costs. I mean, not at all okay. costs, because cost is the, <laughs> the issue there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I was actually just going to add to something that Jane was saying and I was thinking about while listening to you know, my fellow members speak is that I understand that this is the bid that the contractor has given you, but with the process of the staging and if you have to break this up in components, I, I imagine that you will probably need closer to $200,000 at the end of this. I mean, the potential exists that you could. So if you're thinking about like seeking other sources of funding, like maybe it's worth considering that you might need to be raising more money than I think it was like the 160 that you had mentioned, but the, the potential is there that you may need more money than that, because I'd hate to see you go into this process and then find out that you actually need an extra $30,000. So just as a thought bubble to put out there. Yeah, it's always good to pad the, pad the budget a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Good heavens. Yeah. <laughs> we had, uh, uh, in February, when we were talking, uh, the painting of the house was uh, uh, quoted as $80,000. We are now in September, end of September, and the quote is now 100000 So, yeah. But we that can... But Liliana, that didn't include these other jobs. No, but this is just painting. And uh, uh, that is showing that the materials went up and uh, we don't know really. Uh, no, they did go up. They, they did go up during this period of time and uh, they might go up uh, uh, until next June or 1st of July yeah. in well, 2022. So that's all unknown. Yep. Yeah, all of this is so volatile. And I think, uh, especially in this climate, I think it's probable that working with someone, working with a contractor you know well and who's worked with you before is advantageous to the pricing you're getting. Because, okay. yeah, because contractors will you know, if they're busy and they don't really think the job is high priority, they'll just bump up the cost so so that the client won't won't bug them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Gee, I hate okay. for that. To is have there been any other suggestions? <laughs> I didn't hear you. What? Oh, sorry. I just, I, I'm, that, uh, I'm sorry, that seemed to be my last uh, con that oh, okay. neg <laughs> negative comments. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, reality. Yeah. Okay. Other, other comments from uh, 
Commission members? Um, Jane, again, I'm multitasking. I'm looking at the um, preservation mass does have a $10,000 matching grant fund for exterior uh, painting and repair. Anyway, I'm just trying to think of uh, maybe I can pull together a list of potential resources to look for in addition. Yeah, yeah. We would appreciate if you send us that. We are also Absolutely. looking. Yeah, I mean, I did some uh, footwork in that department, but um, when we found out about this, we decided to focus on sure. preparing this. And um, so you had said before the Massachusetts Preservation Project Fund, you had said to the other people who you were mm -hmm. speaking to. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I did look at something in the state. I, that might have been what I looked at, but I can look at that again. Yeah. Um, uh, probably. You might need to check eligibility. Um, I think okay. it's open to municipalities and oh, nonprofits, and it may, we are, may it may be we open. Are non, excuse me, we are a nonprofit. Okay. Okay. Then we I are think. we are that under that five hundred one C Act yeah. or uh, uh, how do okay. call it. Yeah, that's our tax. We are, we are a charitable right. organization. Yeah. Super. Okay, that's great. Um, there was one other, one other uh, source. This may be a bit more of a long shot, but the Massachusetts Cultural Facilities Fund. Um, that's a that's a possibility. Um, it's not it's not a difficult application, uh, but the case to be made there has to be a very strong one about um, the, the contribution of the organization to um, the culture of the community. Okay. And Does that Jane, Massachusetts? Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, Jen, I was just gonna say, I'd be happy to, um, work to put a list together for the uh, potential applicant of possible sources so that we can direct them to the places on the internet and one easy email. Fantastic, thank you. And Hetty, what did you have a comment? Um, uh, no, it's just interesting to me. I was just looking up when the Women's Club was founded, which is 1893. Mm -hmm. And the women actually met on the campus of what was then UMass at the yeah. Agricultural College, which, you know, is it really ties that organization into other extremely important organizations in the history of our town. Um, not just at the building, which is really important, or the location, which is important, or the actual people who've, you know, embodied the history of the organization. It's it's also that that other link with the people who are really kind of rooted in the community. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to learn more um, about this project and, and to support it in any way I can. And I'll, I'll work with Ben and, and Robin to, uh, to get more information and more resources, you, you know, swinging your way. Thank you very, very much. And we have a more information about history of the club. Oh, it, it is a, we have a book that our a member wrote and this is history of Amherst wow. Women's Club, including the story about house. Yeah. That's, that's a great thing to have. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing you again with, a, with your proposal. Okay. Yes. In we two weeks too. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. And, and then, um, so last under CPA projects is an update on the Mill River Interpretive Trail and um, a potential application for that. So Meg is here. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, Meg. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Um, shall I remind people of the project, Jane, or what would be helpful? I think, um, 
Well, we have a couple of new members who um, may not know much about the project. So if it could, yeah, if you could just brief, give us a brief. brief. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. great. So um, the Mill River in North Amherst uh, was the site of a large number of different industrial projects and factories using the power of the river. It was actually the industrial center of Amherst. Uh, and and uh, at the time of the revolution in 1775, there were six mills operating on the Mill River. Uh, there are a, a number of sites still with sort of remains of cellar holes. Uh, and if you know the Mill River Recreation Park, the whole Northern side of that, you'll see there's a hill, this was a canal. And if you go to the uh, right down toward right near where the trail starts, the uh, Julius Lester Trail, you can see the dam that diverted part of the river into the canal that went up and across where the road is now to the grist mill, which is the red building um, right next to the river on Montague Road. In addition, there's the Cushman Clam Club. Uh, so it's, it's a um, important historic part of the town. And all of this, what we're interested in is creating a history trail interpretive trail. Uh, all of the areas of interest are on town land, the cons uh, conservation land. The Conservation Commission has expressed enthusiasm for the project. And we uh, applied for CPA funding last year. And there was, it was kind of a complicated, uh, frankly, I think everyone felt unsatisfactory process because there were different opinions about whether we qualified or not and whether we were, uh, the project was too big. And we had a kind of bigger project than we're proposing now, which was envisioning a kind of uh, interactive trail with uh, signs, with uh, QR codes that people could learn a lot about Amherst history and uh, what we're, and it was, it was too much. And uh, we're now proposing something much more modest, which is a $20,000, $20,100 initial architectural archeological research on four of the sites that we think have the best, uh, the most interesting remains where we know enough about, we can see what was there. Uh, and we have been encouraged to apply again, although there's some questions still about whether we qualify. And I want to express uh, gratitude really to several of you, but uh, Robin has been helpful in trying to figure this out. She's actually in the process of seeking funding from another fund that um, the CPA money could match. Hetty uh, came on the, the tour this summer. We took a lot of pictures. Robin actually has a bunch of pictures. I don't know if she wants to show them now. Is that, is that too short enough or is that enough? No, that's, that's, that's I think that's good. That, that okay. is- It's um, a really, really interesting part of town that most people don't know about. And these, uh, these sites are right in, in front of you but they're endangered because they're, it's a popular swimming area and students are tempted to move the rocks. We have pages of photographs of trinkets and historic things that people have found. They're, they're, uh, people go and try to find, you know, Civil War bullets and old British coins and things. And we want to get those into the strong house <laughs> or a museum is, uh, rather than have them being taken by by individuals so it's a really cool project that we've got to find some way to get to twenty thousand one hundred dollars we're good we're working with a umass archaeologist eric johnson and a colleague of his who have given us a very uh, detailed plan for the research they'll do on four of the sites to start with okay that that sounds great um and the thing yeah, yeah. what what we understand from Sarah Marshall, who's the chair, who's been trying to be helpful. And again, and again it's, there's been some lack of clarity about what, what qualifies uh, and doesn't. Uh, Sarah Marshall said it would be really helpful if the Historic Commission determined that this is a historic resource, uh, not necessarily in endorsing funding, but just is this historically a resource for Amherst that you care about. I mean, it's a pretty modest request. Is that your understanding, uh, Robin and Jane, that that's what Sarah requested? Um, I'm happy to speak. Um, 
that is actually a requirement, I believe, of the CPA for anything that's not on the state register and the national register. And I don't think that that's going to be any problem with this commission, Meg. So, um, but yeah, she's correct to get that assertion from the, the commission. And that I think should be maybe something that comes out of this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that um, this has just been such a great project. And I I know Ben and I, in, in, I'm shoveling a lot of information to Ben and he's trying to get, uh, like we said in the other, um, in relationship to the other application, we're trying to figure out what the rules are, not just for your project, but for all projects going right. forward in perpetuity. And that um, <laughs> I, I would give, I would give a slight, <laughs> right, I would give a slight uh, revision to what you said, which is that this is not, uh, that, that my suggestion had been to um, break this up into its planning and, and implementation phases. And mm -hmm. so what we're trying to do is support your group's application for planning funding, which might be funded under a slightly different heading under the CPA. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to clarify. And then uh, the ultimate result of that, if that planning funding was granted and you could go, guys could go forward. Just lost my connection. Oh. Oh, sorry. the uh, the The ultimate result of a, of of uh, of that planning process would be the creation of an in, uh, some recommendations for implementation of the trail, which could then come forward to CPA again in a second funding round to help bring the trail into existence. So all so where I think we're all we're in support of all of it. We just need to figure out the appropriate way with the law and and the regulations right. that go with funding it. Um, so I hope that uh, helps clarify for mm -hmm. for everybody who's listening. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if you want to see the photos that Robin took of the Oh, Bye. that was what I was going to ask Ben. I think I shared them in the Google Drive with you. But maybe that's not necessary uh, I can, uh, I'll let Jane make that call so just to underscore what Robin said while he's looking this is the preliminary research part of the project to that would and included in his recommendation in Eric's proposal I mean is that they would make specific recommendations about next steps and what what we should do so this is a much more modest kind of early research approach to this project. And there's a whole lot else we could share that we want to do around the project, but that's when we lose people because it sounds like, you know, we, we have, we see this as an important community building project uh, down the road, but you don't need to hear all about that. But if you want to ever, we'd be happy to share kind of why is a neighborhood association so interested in history? It's because we want to be proud of our part of town and to have everybody sort of understand uh, how cool it is. <laughs> yeah. um, ben, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I, um, one thing I wanted to add was, uh, I, obviously there's this, um, we're seeking clarification about the uh, eligibility of this project and you know where it fits in the CPA. Um, but I think uh, one thing I've been talking with uh, Nate about is like how to, independent of the the the, uh, el the opinion we get from town attorney, I think one way to frame the application, especially for the for the planning part of it, for the archaeological part of it, is that um, you know at the historical commission, you know, I, I understand will. Uh, bestow historical significance upon this this site um, and I think that that's an important criteria but then two you can think of the the archaeological part of it as um, in order to protect the or in order to preserve the historic resources that are there and that are not well understood we need to hire an archaeologist to uncover and um, identify those resources so they can be preserved and protected and that no harm comes to them. Um, and I think if you frame it like that, as opposed to, hey, we just want to understand what's going on here, um, yeah. then 
it might it it probably has a better shot at uh being eligible under historic preservation and, and you probably already knew that i think that was kind of the the way it was worded on the original application but just to reinforce that would be good that it's to make, make sure no more harm comes to the historic right. resource present and preserve what's there okay i think um thank you for um offering photos, but I think given the time, um, we probably should um, go to another agenda item. Um, okay. But I um, want to thank you for kind of, you know, keeping at this and figuring, I mean, <laughs> and uh, figuring the angles, yeah. She's in California. It's great that she's um, joining us. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my camera works. You could have seen me, but um, I had a comment. Thank you very much, Jane, for what you said, and everyone. Uh, and I, I, I feel the enthusiasm people feel for the project. We just have to find a way to make this fit in this whole. And um, at a previous meeting, I had a comment I wanted to make about something extremely unrelated. And then I, it was the meeting went on and on. I wasn't able to. So, do you have public comment tonight? We we do. It, okay, I'm like, yeah, it will be the last. It will be the last I, thing, but. Um, I may yeah. come back or else I'll just send Ben a note, but okay. it's really, really good news about the, the uh, Matusco demolition. Okay. I'll just basically tell you the town stepped in. I'll, you, you all don't know the background. I'll write it up. It's really good what the town did. Okay. Bravo. All right. Great. So we were worried about the, the brown fields from the oil spill right. and we didn't have to worry. Okay. I'll, I'll write to you all. It's really great news. I was really proud of my town. That's <laughs> good. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Carry on, everybody. Thanks for the good work. Okay. Thanks, Meg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Um, let's see. Can we? Could we just go back to um, agenda item number two very quickly? Um, we have to find someone to serve on the design review board. And thanks very much, but you have to be officially nominated. Do I, do I hear any nominations for a representative to the design review board? Do I get to, or do I have to stand back since I'm already the rep? Um, I, I, I nominate Catherine. Good idea, second. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sounds great. Well, let's. Oh, it's not over, Catherine. Oh no! <laughs> not over here. We have we have to take a roll call. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! We haven't asked her if she's accepting the nomination. That was what tonight oh, that's, was. About. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I I I I wholeheartedly accept. Thank you very much. Yay! Okay. You. How wonderful. So. Um, because that was a motion and seconded, um, let's just quickly say yay, first from Pat. Yay. I mean, I didn't mean that to be like a leading comment. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, you get to vote too. Yay. Okay. Uh, Robin. Yay. Becky. Yay. Jan. Yes, siri. Hetty. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And I say, yippee, and thank you. Yes. And, so um, so I, sorry for being tardy. I, as I said, I got caught in a work tornado. So not to worry. Um, there is a meeting. There was a meeting um, a couple days ago, and there's going might be a short follow up for one of the items. So depending on how it comes down. If it's just a follow up to what we already discussed, I'll go ahead and do that. But if it's more new stuff, then, uh, and I told Maureen, I told the group this was a possibility. I'll let her know. And then she can put you on the mailing list and everything. And Perfect. I have all the materials. Um, in fact, I have booklets, which they shouldn't reprint and everything. I'll, I'll try and send those to you myself so the town doesn't waste another, you know, bunch of paper and printing. Yeah, in fact, um, using my email on the, um, the meeting thing, just send me an email of your address, if you would. Yes, sounds great. 
Super. Thank you. Fabulous. And let me um, thank Jan for, is it five years? Of Six. Six years of being the Historical Commission's representative to the Design Review Board. So that is that long fun. and possibly, um, well, thank you for your long and energetic service. <laughs> No need to say anything further. No, it, it's, it's fine. I just I need to cut back now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, update on the bylaw for um, our, our newly reworded update on bylaw for the preservation of historically significant structures. Is this a Ben item? Yeah. Yeah, it can be. Um, yeah, I just wanted to check in with everyone about it. Obviously, the commission put in a lot of work to uh, rewrite the, the demolition delay bylaw. Um, I think there were some concerns from staff about uh, just making sure that it uh, was a, a, a legal, legally, uh, everything was, was sound. Um, and uh, so I'm happy to let you all know that we did have our a town attorney look it over we had a, a zoom meeting went through it line by line really closely and uh he, he had a few comments here and there just to clarify some things um but really no no substantive issues um i guess the only thing was the uh the appeals section which i think most of you wanted to do away with anyway he was saying it's not really appropriate to have a separate appeals section it, it should just follow the um normal course of action as laid out for the general bylaw so that was a big hurdle i i i had some concerns about kind of the two-step process and how we were defining demolition and he he said not you know not to worry it's in line with a lot of other communities especially those in eastern mass so uh that's good news and um I'm just putting the finishing touches on it with his comments. Um, and um, I don't know how much how much any of you have followed kind of the, the zoning work that the planning board and the town council are taking on now, but um, there's been a lot of zoning bylaw changes that we've been developing, uh, you know, mostly due to down uh, related to downtown and housing and those sorts of uh, issues, but um, it's kind of like I've been waiting for like uh, them to get through that uh, block of zoning proposals and the our bylaws just been kind of like waiting in the queue ready to go hit prime time. Um, and I think it's it's really close um, in the in the next. Uh, you know, I think the planning. Yeah, it could be in the next few weeks that the that the uh, planning board takes it up as, as a discussion item. Um, and I think that the first step is to just kind of get some initial thoughts and feedback and then uh, have presented to town council and then start a public hearing. So I'm I'm confident it'll it'll happen in the in the next few weeks. And do you um, still want Jane and I to present at the planning board with that? presentation I put together or are you thinking not now? Yeah, no, I definitely, definitely that makes sense if, if you guys are still up for it. Depends on when it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um I I told what I told Chris, uh breast rep the planning director, who is, you know, kind of the, the liaison to the planning board is, you know, I would I would way rather uh present at a meeting where the I, we actually the planning board is not completely overwhelmed with a million other things um, as they have been the past you know two three four months and to get them you know when they're fresh and uh, rather than you know and this has happened twice to me now where I'm on the agenda and I sit through the whole meeting and then they decide to end end early because it's so late and everyone's brain dead so um, I told her like, let's just get through th this busy time. And if it, if it needs to wait a few weeks then that's fine, but. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. So, thanks sense. everyone. Thanks everyone for your patience. I know it was a. 
one of those things. Better to have the right strategy for it than, than to rush it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this has been underway for, it's one of those things that's been in the works for a while. So if, if we're now needing to wait a few weeks longer after having come this far, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. And we started November of 2015. So if we get it done by November, it'll be only six years. <laughs> it's just, just <laughs> rocketing past. Uh, <laughs> I mean, thanks for it's all a taking much that. Fast, a much faster process than the writer's walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was 2009. So gosh, yeah. And both ended oh. with a good product. So that's that's what counts. That's right. I just wanted to thank Ben for taking it on. I think it was really, it was great that it became home and that area of sort of more expertise, and we get to weigh in, but not have to be quite, not have to recreate law without a law background. <laughs> yeah, he inherited a big mess from two previous people. It, it was, we've been working through it with a lot of changes of staff and members. So yeah, it, you, you helped us tie it in a nice little package. Thank yep. you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you. And then speaking of the long running writer's walk. Um, next agenda item is uh, setting a date for a launch event. Um, yeah, so I still, I still thought, um, I know we kind of went the, the, the end, late September day that we had in mind came, uh, came coming down or not quite, but uh, we were thinking- It's only 22nd. Yeah, it's only this one, <laughs> that's true. But uh, I think I was a little nervous just because the, the uh, town canceled the block party, which is like a big, big event. And I think with COVID numbers higher, I just I didn't want to push it, push it to have a, an event, even though it's outside. But um, I thought maybe mid mid to late October, things might be a little bit better and the weather will still be somewhat manageable to have something outside. Um, so what I, what I really had in mind, and I'd like to hear others' thoughts, was just uh, to just kind of gather together outside um, one of the signs, probably on the common in front of, I'm thinking the bolt, in front of the bolt, what in makes sense. Um, and just to say a few words, uh, maybe we can get the town manager to kind of uh, give his blessing for the for the project and uh, whoever else maybe um, Ann Tweedy or someone from the bid might want to speak and and then uh, uh, kind of just I think you know go go see a few of the signs maybe go down Spring Street go to the uh, Dickinson Museum uh, there's one in front of uh, Crazy Crazy Noodles on Main Street um, if we want we could go into like the Lincoln Sunset neighborhood. Um, but I think uh, just kind of get our steps in and go, <laughs> go see a few of the signs. Mm -hmm. What if what if we gave everyone a map after the ceremonial? Yeah, because we have plenty of those. To have a parade yeah. might not work. work. Yeah. yeah, but to give everybody a, a, a map and right. to say, choose what direction you want to go in with your group, your family, et cetera, because I, I in, in especially with COVID, I, I can't envision us making a group walk. Yeah, that no, makes sense. You know, I think that might not be be so welcome, but I think if we gave everyone a map and and whoever is speaking to say the Emily Dickinson house is this way, the Lincoln Street is this way, um, you know, and here's a map and you choose where you want to start. That might that might be um, COVID. Friendly? Mm -hmm. Dan, what do you think? This is your baby. Oh, that's fine. I mean, the cards have a map on them and a list of the houses with the addresses. So those will, they'll have those automatically. And yeah, I mean, I, I think there won't be a whole lot of people there. Um, it's more probably a media event. So the newspaper pops a picture and puts it up after they've right. already run the um, 
the press release that Ben's working on, and that just brings more exposure. I Great think it's work. a good time of year. It's my favorite weather. I think it'll be fine. So I think it will be fine. And the press release will include the brochure with the map. And so that, that will be part of it. But I, I, I think allowing people to kind of focus on what interests them sure. and make that their start might be. Yeah. And once we have a date, we can have Amherst Books do a display in the window of the authors. Right. Because we'll be right there. I mean, maybe we could just walk over there because there's that the one uh, sign right in front of their building. Um, and then um, they might have something in the window that will support this. I don't know if you want to talk to them, Ben, about that. They had said they would, right? Yeah, I planted the seed in like probably like July or something, and they were definitely just waiting that. for the date. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so what kind of uh, what kind of organization need, steps need to be done? Should we include this date in the press release? And um, and then uh, let's see, send the press release to some kind of list. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I usually have the um, the town like as a communication manager handles that mm -hmm. so she'll post it to the town's website and then has like a list of contacts but well, she'll send it out to okay. so I, i'm sorry jane i was just thinking if if we're wanting the town manager and maybe the chair of the town council to be present there might need to be some some conversation behind the scenes in in settling on the date yeah, that's that's a good point. And then um, and then kind of formal um, official invitation. Yeah. Yes. To, to and ask. maybe um, a eight by or eight and a half by eleven flyer in some of the windows mm -hmm. around town that it's happening. That you know, sort of part of the press release, just a shortened version. Maybe just to put it in the bookstore and some of the restaurants and. Mm -hmm. Boltwood, maybe at the Boltwood front desk for visitors or, you know. And there's a Facebook page from the bid or a combination of the bid and, and Chamber of Commerce where they've been posting event information. So if we have a poster, they might be very willing to post it on their Facebook page. Yeah. In, in, in a yeah. time time sequence close to the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you... If you don't mind my um, sort of changing the headline to say something like um, Emily Dickinson's home now part of Riders Walk, um, I think we could send it out to the, the Dickinson list. So just the ones that go out would say that? Just the ones uh, that you send out. Just yeah, just the one that the Emily Dickinson Museum sends out, so okay. that it so that it looks like it's speaking to to our list. Right, sure. that makes a lot of sense, especially since we added it in where it hadn't been before. <laughs> this is good. It wasn't on the original walk, you know. It's I'm not sure I knew that. Yeah, it's yeah. an important part of it. So yeah, good work, they Jan. They didn't do any of they didn't do things that were already known. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I added that and something, I forget what the other one I added was, but there were two that weren't in there. So. Huh, how about that? No, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> was it Robert Frost, Jen? I can't remember, it might have been. I can't remember, or it was some house that was well known or something, but anyway, yeah. Um, well, fittingly then, the sign at the Dickinson house was the last to go up. Yeah. <laughs> so is there a day of the week that this might be more um, uh, attended or attention paid? Weekend. True. Like a, like a Sunday afternoon? Yeah, or I wonder if it... Oh, no, I guess that's not a good idea. I was going to say somehow time it 
like after the farmer's market, but I, now I realize the farmer's market is on the common. So there's a little bit of. Right. And mm -hmm. parking's an issue more so yeah. because yeah. their space is taken away. Won't it be ending soon though? I it's guess November. Going, going all the way to uh, just before yeah. Thanksgiving this year. Yeah. yeah. It might be tough to get um, town manager and uh, staff on a, on, a, on, a, on a weekend. On a weekend. Well, Friday, <laughs> Friday after work. But yeah, like a like a Thursday or Friday, like at like five p.m. or something like work. Or four four thirty. I mean, they yeah. all don't have to stay. Well, well, it's still light. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point because it's getting. I mean, the, the days sun. are getting shorter. But but in like, October, mid October, it'll still be light at four o'clock. Yeah, I, I'm not sure on a Thursday I can be back from Boston in time, so it would have to be Friday. Let's make it Friday. Jan has to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't have to be, but if you want me to do. <laughs> if if we say holders have to be you have to be. What? If we want you, you have to be. Oh, okay. Uh, absolutely. And and you we probably want you to speak a few words about it. You want me to dress up as Robert Frost or something? Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I can do that. Okay. Great. Okay. So, I mean, maybe, maybe I could give the maybe I could give the town manager and town council folks like an option of the fifteenth or the twenty second, or or the Fridays in late October. Uh, I'm not here the fifteenth. I'm taking care of my grandson in New York. Sorry. The 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 twenty second. Start with that. That works for them. Otherwise, uh, 29th. What about well the uh, the uh, preceding Friday is a little bit too soon. Yeah. That might be the start of Columbus Day. Um, I, don't have a, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but it might. It be. is it's the start of Columbus Day weekend. Yeah. Indigenous People Weekend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Um, is, is, should we throw in another day of the week? Uh, when are you in town, Jan? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm here. So, but a Monday. Wednesday, like this, like like us now, like us. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jane, you too. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I usually have something. I often have something late afternoon on Wednesday that I can change. So I can I can change it. And then we could just roll right into our meeting. If of course. we're having a meeting. If not, we can go out for a drink. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A little frivolity. Yeah. yeah. I'm planning on bringing a bottle of champagne anyway. So yeah. So maybe so we should focus on Wednesdays if the Fridays are looking not so welcoming. That There's gives us one. more more when more days to focus on because the Wednesday before Indigenous Peoples Weekend, the next Wednesday and the next Wednesday, those are three weeks in a row that are still probably decent weather. Well, the if, 6th is too early. So the 13th, 20th, right. or the 27th. If we did it on the 20th, it's my birthday. We could have birthday cake afterwards. Why not? We'll toast to. <laughs> we'll raise a glass. <laughs> we, we can put a candle on every single writer's walk sign. <laughs> so Ben, okay, does, does that make sense to everybody to do when the, yeah. those Wednesdays? And yeah. that gives you conversation points, Ben, to figure yeah. out which works best. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, so is, it, is the 22nd not, is the Friday 22nd not an option or is it potentially? No, it's still an option. Yeah, it's okay. still an option. That and the 29th. We're just giving you more possibilities. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, the, last, the last thing before the closing items is um, the Amherst Preservation Plan and possible update. Um, it's overdue. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, ben, you sent us some workshop information and one of the workshops was the preservation plan workshop. Yeah, so I think I signed up for it. I forget. I I, yeah, I have to get to it today because I got taken away before I could get back to it. But that might be something if everyone can schedule it as a preamble to our having the start working on on updating it. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, scheduled for October 20th at 10 a.m. There's a webinar about developing a preservation plan. Mm -hmm. So that would, that's a good starting place. That and yeah. maybe just reviewing the preservation plan. Um, I'm thinking there is a, I think there's some kind of document from a while ago that sort of checks off things that have been done. Uh, it, it's probably buried deep someplace, but I'll, yeah. I'll look for it. Okay. Yeah, so we just so everyone knows, we have we have the money for it. Uh, we have uh, twenty five thousand dollars from CPA, I think, from 2019, 2018 or so, um, that we've been sitting on. And I think not only is there not only is there it's important to update the plan, but I think the uh, the CPA committee is starting to uh, get more uh, stringent on spending money within a certain time period uh, and not just banking the funds. So it's important to, uh, to do it for that reason as well. But um, I just think going into it, we should know kind of like what, you know, obviously the first one was from 2005. So the, the work for it probably happened in like 2003 and four building up to it. So it's fairly outdated at this point, but it might be good to just kind of see what 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 worked, what didn't work with the first plan. Um, obviously the the bulk of the plan is uh, or not the bulk of it, but a, a fairly large section is just the the history of Amherst, um, which we wouldn't need a consultant to rewrite per se unless there's parts we want to edit. So I think uh, the person the, the, they could you know add details here and there, but uh, really focusing on the the, the implementation steps, um, and I think getting someone with a knowledge of Massachusetts uh, and like the, the different uh, uh, grant uh, grant opportunities that are out there, and uh, you know how does Mass Historic work with local historic commissions, and um, just understanding uh that framework uh would be good and not not to say that the martha lyons the first uh original author didn't i just think uh having that uh, background would be helpful but um i think i'll work with you all to put together the rfp and the scope of work so we can all kind of craft that together um, and you know, I think one thing I've been thinking about is as, as well as um, you know with this with the Civil War tablets, um, it's kind of I feel like a lot there's been a lot of momentum towards um, you know thinking about African American history in Amherst, and you know not to mention the the reparations efforts that are underway with Town Council, um, and you know the work we we hope to get underway with in the in West Cemetery. So. Um, it might be interesting to kind of have that lens going into the preservation plan as well, thinking about um, who, what groups are not well represented in the, in the original preservation plan and uh, what we might look to do to um, kind of address that or bring that to light. So that was just one yeah. thing I was thinking about is what is something that a kind of a new way to think about it as well. Yeah, actually, that's one of the arguments I made and in favor. When I can, when I was getting resistance from the CPA to for funding it, so that's oh, very nice. good at target. <laughs> yeah, it's something that's been an issue for me since the beginning on this commission is that we tend to uh, want to preserve the fancy houses that were built by the rich and that all the workers 
dwellings and row houses and you know the areas of town like the Kurok and the African American area are not as attractive to preserve, but I still think they should be. And I think that some of the farmhouses that came out of the Sears catalog and those kind of things still, we need to have representative examples of all those. So I've, this has always been a concern and, and it would be great to actually state it, you know, for the record in the preservation plan. Yeah, I, I agree, Jan. It's, it's, it's all who the town is mm -hmm. and we have to recognize that. It's a very um, forward thinking kind of current, I think, and the preservation movement is really moving in that direction. So it's a perfect time for it. I mean, if you look at the things that we looked at tonight, we've got two big houses that were, you know, mill owners and, and that sort of thing. And it would be good if some of the workers' houses were also being, you know, had their most of them didn't survive. I mean, you know, or they were poor construction or they've been taken down since, but if there is anything that comes up, we need to sort of prioritize it, I think. Well, I think that house that got moved, um, Barry Roberts is an example of that. That was a typical, a, farmhouse. A typical farmhouse or mo modest house. And, um, it, it, you know, our encouragement and Barry Roberts' willingness to work with Amherst College and Amherst College his willingness to preserve it. it all came together and I passed by that site a couple times a week and the the uh, support yeah. basement is in now and I, I I would be curious to see how they actually settle 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 in there it seems like such a remarkable progress but but a short story is we we were very concerned about preserving that building and I think that um, we will continue to be this this might this is premature to make this comment I think but um, this is where um, registered districts or or local historic districting um, could be useful uh, because you know the big houses we talk about tonight they're both they both have that kind of designation and mm -hmm. they, they get to kind of use that as leverage for CPA funding. And um, so, so that could be a tool. Yeah. There is actually a really interesting group of houses that Habitat for Humanity built um, down on Southeast Street, just off Southeast Street. Mm -hmm. And I'm very curious about them and their preservation. Um, I don't think they're that old yet. They're, 19, they're about 1970. I knocked on the door and actually used my I'm an architectural historian line, <laughs> which I don't usually use um, anymore. And, uh, you know, talked to one of the owners there. And they're, they're an important group of middle class, lower middle class housing in, in our midst. And, um, you know, I suspect that they're, as Jan, Jane's saying, if we if we're building out our knowledge of neighborhoods and residential areas, we'll find more. Um, and that and those houses were interesting because, and actually, I actually think they're post nineteen eighty five or ninety heading. Oh, really? I I watched them being built one one after the other, um, yeah. but it was awesome. land, <laughs> land that belonged to Amherst College. Yeah, and Amherst Co College students were part of the habitat group that built them and I believe a local architect designed them and so if we take all that into consideration we need to keep an eye on them and make sure they're preserved yeah they're, they're a moment in time of a movement Habitat for Humanity building houses with sweat equity of the future owners is a, is a movement um, that that is part of modern modern history So let's see, we've um, next steps with this. Um, the webinar sounds great. Um, so practical steps, I think if we haven't, if we individually haven't like scanned the preservation plan recently, that, that might be a good thing to do. And then um, the RFP, um, should we, um, 
should we look at a draft at our next meeting or the meeting after that? Ben, did you have a, a sense of what how you wanted to how you wanted to execute on this? Yeah, so um, uh, let's see. I could maybe maybe next meeting we could like brainstorm ideas for the the scope of work, but uh, I uh, you know there's like a a mass mass like planners listserv. There's a mass historic preservation listserv. But there's another one that's mass planners listserv, and uh, the I think Northampton is updating their preservation plan too right now because they they're the planning director over there just posted on mass planners to solicit examples of scopes of work and RFPs. And uh, I reached out to the Northampton planning director and he sent me everything he, he, he received. Oh, okay. So I, I have, uh, let's see, from Beverly, from Arlington, from uh, a few other places, kind of example, Sudbury scope, scopes of work. So I can kind of begin to uh, pull, pull some, language from there um, and uh yeah it'll be interesting because you know obviously we're updating a plan so uh, some of the work's been done but um it'd be uh i think it's still um should definitely be uh, applicable to what we're doing okay thank you that's that's pretty great to have that Delivered right to your inbox. Yeah, plan planners in Massachusetts are very forthcoming and share a lot of information, which is nice. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, well that'll that'll be great. Um, so let's see. I'm looking at uh, at our participant list, and we have now zero attendees. So we we can forgo the public comment period. Um, hey, and I have a. I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't just a quick item going back to uh, Meg's um, proposal is just she had an inquiry about when the Historical Commission will confirm uh, the historic significance of the Mill River sites area. Would that be at our next meeting when we're actually reviewing the proposals? Oh. Um... And would that be in the form of a letter from you with the commission's agreement? He um you know i haven't i'm not i don't know if there is a is any you know process to this or whether we just vote on it and then and then write a two sentence letter um i think it's ben, the latter <laughs> but ben can weigh in i think it's in the it might be in the dr guidance i remember reading it somewhere it's not very specific okay all right so i think maybe um to, to make it um, to, to make it a uh, kind of a, a, a serious effort if we <laughs> maybe have one page uh, about these four sites uh, and maybe a photograph of each one is is that something that um, so Meg said you had some photographs Robin does that does that have photographs of the, the yeah. Four? Yeah. yeah, well, I can get something from Eric and the four and four photographs and forward that to you. It could, you know, it could be sort of basically what Meg said tonight. Okay, I can see if I can With pull the photographs. it. Photographs, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I'll, I'll pull out what I can and I'll forward it to you this week. Okay, that's great. And then um, I think if we, I don't know, that just, it, it, it feels better to me personally to have you know, some something to that all of us have seen uh, okay. about that Great. in order right. to vote. So I get I think that would mean next meeting. Okay. So we can discuss it and then take a vote. Exactly. That. Okay. So okay. I will perhaps send to you and next meeting we'll discuss and take a vote. Yeah. And then um Robin was, or and or Teddy, I guess I was wondering, could you clarify when the historical commission needs to like provide recommendations to the CPA committee. I'm, I'm looking at the calendar that I think they sent out. And uh, 
it's a little bit unclear. I mean, there's this kind of during the month of October, there's this period of like questions and responses to applicants. Um, but then it's, you know, it's not till December that they're actually, uh, or November that they're discussing and voting. So I think it's when we start discussing that, um, that that happens that, um, yeah, because we go through, so the moment the discussion opens, we go through each of the proposals, and then I would say for the historic commission proposals, the commission, you know, is recommended, you know, whatever this amount of funding for this project or so, so that's, yeah, it doesn't need to, uh, doesn't need to happen till what, no, late November? Yeah, I mean, unless I think they would probably want the historical commission recommendation before they begin discussing and voting right so no i mean i'm trying to think I, I think last time we just we took the vote within the meeting and i took it with me yeah and it wasn't really offered up until we get into the discussion of it so as a committee we first sit down and we go uh, everybody has done their question and answer and then we review uh uh, proposal by proposal, and that was when I would weigh in to say the Historic Commission formally recommends this for this dollar amount for this reason. Okay. So this schedule would mean that we would need to make our recommendations by October 28th. So that would no, be- quite... No, because no? those are presentations. That's that's the um, people with the uh, proposals coming before. I mean, we could certainly, when does the when does the um, proposal application close? October. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I mean, there's no reason not to do it in the October meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think we have until uh, discussion begins November 18th. Yeah. So we've got yep. the October yeah. meeting, and if we had our meeting early enough in November, we'd have that time too. Right. Um, uh, Becky. Oh, just a quick question about the proposals themselves. Um, where can they be found so that we can review them? Yeah, so they've not actually been submitted yet at this point. Oh. They'll, be, they'll be submitted on October 1st and okay. then uh, they're posted to the town's website. They'll be, I okay. Yeah. yeah, good question though. Yeah. Uh, ben, will you distribute them before we will distribute them before we review them? I don't, I didn't recall them being on the website before. I mean, I always receive them as being a member of CPA. So yeah, uh, either way, whether or they're on the website or they have to be you'll, emailed to me separately. Yeah, I can distribute them. Okay, you'll alert us. They should be, um, wouldn't they be like in a folder or a portfolio, kind of like our, our meeting materials are? Yeah. 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 We've always gotten them like that before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next, the last uh, agenda item uh, gains significance because of the CPA proposal, and that's the next meeting date. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, and let's see. So this is the. This is the third Wednesday. I it, think that's what we were trying to do. Uh huh. Works. So, yeah. Why don't, if if the third? I actually Wednesday, have yeah. I have it on my calendar as the twentieth. Yeah. Twentieth. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, everything's happening on my birthday. <sighs> Just Happy think birthday. you have us to celebrate with, Jan. <laughs> Probably more than I would normally have. <laughs> okay. I encourage you to take the full birthday fortnight. That's what I do. I take a two-week period where I say, it's either before my birthday, almost my birthday, just after my birthday, or it was just my birthday. <laughs> I've got you covered. I usually do the entire month of October. So. There you go. You're good. <laughs> I believe in birthday months. Yep. Got it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that uh, if if you get really creative with the agenda, 
<laughs> if we do the writer's walk that day, though, it would be a pain to go there and then try to get home and then have a meeting. That's too much in one night. So yeah, it is. Maybe we could schedule to the following week if that ends up being the favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, just as long as it's, I can't do the week, I cannot do the 13th. Okay, okay. well, the 27th, maybe. Okay. Oh, as an alternate, yeah, okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. We're we looking at November, right? October. October. Oh, I'm sorry, October. Okay, yeah. And then, um, let's see. Uh, oh, goodness, I can't, can't pull up my calendar, but should we... Um, we, I guess these are, we don't have a raft of proposals. We can get through them in one meeting, don't you think? Yeah, we've heard a lot about them too already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, because uh, usually we uh, hear the presentations and then rank them. Yeah, and so, so we've we, already heard some of the presentations. Can we do, all, can we do yeah. the presentations and the ranking all in one? meeting yeah. probably probably yeah. as long as they, i think we should limit the presentations this time because we've already heard from most of those people and rather than having them go on and on just tell them they have five minutes to update what they said or something like that yeah mm -hmm. I, well and i think yeah, yeah a time a time limit is kind of standard that's what we do at cpa too you really have to fit it into that time period and then it it keeps things succinct yeah and we, we will have read the proposals. So we, uh, I think part of the point is for us to be, ab be able to uh, ask for clarifications. Yeah, but, and some years when we had a lot of them, we just only asked questions and they didn't say anything unless they were answering our question. Yeah, that's right. And I've just noticed that um, the third Wednesday in November is the 17th and discussions start on the 18th. So we've got, we've got that little bit of wiggle room if we need it. That's good, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Can I move? We adjourn. Second. This, <laughs> this is all. This meeting has only lasted two hours. I know. This is perfect. You've done good. such a good job. I have to get up before dawn and <laughs> I'm not ready. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> nine thirty. <laughs> what, Jane? You want to start? Celebrating my birthday now? Is that the yeah. plan? <laughs> yeah, that's the real point. Uh, you know, okay. All right. Well, thank you for the um, the motion and the second. And this is not a debatable motion. And so. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Okay. thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.